What is going on, people? It is your boy Astro, aka the Galaxy Shogun, coming to you here today with a One Piece chapter review for One Piece chapter 1063. I know that I have not posted reviews for the past videos. That's because I was having some stuff done in my unit and basically did not have access to my computer to post these videos. That being said, I'm sure the whole all oh, Vega Punk stuff. This is not really Vega Punk. The Pats of Vega Punk. You've probably seen about a hundred videos on that already. So I decided there's no point of me putting out a half-assed video without access to my computer and editing when there's probably a million other YouTubers that are going to tell you about it anyway. So, more of the story, we're on Egghead, CP0 might come, Bonnie is Kuma's daughter confirmed, and we've met some Vegapunk. And I say we've met some Vegapunk, because apparently it's kind of like a Nagato Pain situation, where there's six different Vegapunks, and the main Vegapunk, which is still the old man, the Stella, as they call it, we have yet to be seen. And they're based on a lot of things. The first one that we saw, the super hot one that threw everybody off, was Lilith, which is a really cool name, and then... We've met a few more so far, so it's going to be exciting, and I'm definitely going to make a more descriptive video once we get more information on the rest of the uh, Pats of Vegapunk, so to speak. So let's go ahead and focus on One Piece Chapter 1063, because holy smokes, you know, not going to lie, you had us in the first half. I was thinking, okay, you know, we're getting a bit of information. I like the Jewelry Bonnie fan service, you know. She's definitely number two in the verse. If you think otherwise, well, you're wrong goes Nico Robin, then Jewelry Bonnie, and I don't want to hear otherwise, especially in that outfit, my god. But anyways, we get that, and you know, they're using the machine that gives them clothes, they basically just select it, and I guess we get our new egghead uniforms for the arc. Once again, Bonnie's, oof, jeez, I'm sweating. But, 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 we end up seeing that there is some sort of police unit that looks like Kuma, and again, because Bonnie is Kuma's daughter, as was confirmed last chapter, she was begging Luffy not to retaliate on him, and you would think that Bonnie would uh, have a good idea of, you know, that not being the real Kuma, considering that, you know, Kuma's her father. We get a little flashback of little Bonnie and Kuma in the past, so that was pretty cool as well. But overall, she's getting super emotional. Don't hurt my daddy! Uh, even though that's clearly a robot version of him. Or, um, It's yet to be seen, like, you know, if Seraphims are fully mechanicals, like Pacifista, but this one here that's shooting lasers from its mouth is seemingly... Very robotic, like the original um, Pacifista, so not as strong as the Seraphim, though we did see Seraphim Kuma uh, last chapter, so a lot of people didn't realize that was the Seraphim. I think it was pretty clear with the black wings, and he definitely looked younger, so I mean, that problem child is definitely coming, and it's going to be interesting to see if Bonnie tries to stop Luffy or anyone else from attacking that Seraphim Kuma as well. At this point, we have Pacifista Kumas, special Pacifista Kumas from the movies, Seraphim Kuma, police officer Kuma. Kuma is very quickly becoming the nurse uh, or officer Jenny slash nurse Joy of uh, the One Piece verse. It's getting kind of insane with all this cloning and whatnot. So, you know, very interested to see what happens there. So, you know, there's a lot to cover in this chapter. So beyond, you know, Kuma and their destructive power, which seemingly is more powerful than a pacifista because I would hope that a Luffy at this point could, you know, really low diff a pacifista considering right after time skip, he could one hit it with just a little bit of arm and hockey and gear second. So, you know, given all the buffs Luffy's gotten so far, I would hope that that is some sort of special pacifista and that's the reason Luffy's not just no diffing it, you know? So what did catch me by surprise is the fact that we saw Blackbeard in this chapter. I was not expecting that. I don't know if you guys were. Let me know in the comments if you thought that was coming. Zeh ha ha ha. As soon as I saw the ship, I'm like, okay, maybe it's um, Burgess or someone else on his crew, but I don't know that I expected to see that many of the pirates, so let, let's get on to uh, the stuff that's going to make the internet go crazy. We got a gender-swapped Trollfagger D. Water Law, and he looks exactly like Nico Robin, which I don't know if that's some shorter foreshadowing from Oda. Oda loves pairing Robin with a lot of people. I mean, One Piece is not a romance series, but it's fun to do pairings like that and shippings, you know what I mean? You know, that's a little bit more fun to it. And I've always been a big Law and Robin guy. I know some people are Zoro and Robin, some people are Frankie and Robin. I don't really mind the Frankie and Robin ship, considering she already grabbed his balls. But, um, I mean, Law is the carbon copy of Robin in female form and looks hella badass with the tattoos. We also see that uh, Sachi was turning into a female. We see that Penguin seemingly is still a male, but Sachi... Sachi, you could see them curves on him. You could see them curves on her. So I was like, all right, this chapter. I don't know what to say about that, but yeah, it's a lot. Even Beppo in the back with the wig, <laughs> looking like uh, looking like one of the bears. I think uh, the bear's wife from Cleveland Show. I don't remember what the bear's name is, but I think he's looking exactly like the wife. That's what that immediately reminded me of. So a lot of Law's crew, which I'll be honest, kind of fodder, uh, turning into females. And Law admits something, or, or gives us a revelation, I should say, that you can actually disable the effects of Devil Fruits with enough hockey, which makes me think, so if someone like Bo Hancock, if they were turning you into stone, could you actually disable that with enough hockey? Because if that's the case, then 
that's that's uh that's kind of a big nerf to her like there's there's a lot of pr going on as as uh, <laughs> as some certain youtubers would say uh in terms of you know hockey and users that don't have devil fruits and then you have law using hockey but it's unclear if it's just arm and hockey we already know he has observation arm and hockey we don't know if he's a conqueror's hockey user yet so that's yet to be determined and then you know clearly uh the important part here he transforms himself back into a male like forces his titties away forces the curves away and turns back from nico robin into the law we know and love <laughs> so he nullified the disease and apparently this is something from docu six sick fruit we get a lot of revelations of blackbeard's crews there are basically yeah see i already made a naruto reference with the vegapunks being like the pats of pain nagato all that stuff and now we have literally the akatsuki in blackbeard's crew just hunting devil fruit users it's very reminiscent of the akatsuki hunting uh you know the tailed beasts because they're just hunting the best devil fruit users i feel bad for all of these poor devil fruit users they're like oh we hear this guy's a pegasus fruit we're gonna go steal his fruit we hear this guy's a six sick fruit jesus burgess fruit is literally the buff buff fruit like i don't want to call it lazy and his new design looks pretty beastly with the added muscles i suppose but it just makes you wonder when all of this happened and i hope to god that oda doesn't off screen this and the fight that i will get to definitely so you know doc q has the six sick fruit and that apparently i i was scared that ivankov got got but ivankov was with dragon so i'm like how the heck could that have happened so fast luckily that's not the case doc q has a six sick fruit which i don't think we've heard of prior to this and he can play with people on a molecular structure structure or like uh you know make people have diseases which apparently can turn you into a female i don't know if the translation is just a little off with that but i don't know how a disease can turn you into a woman or an antibody so uh yeah a little confused there but let's leave it to the uh, smarter folk than me to uh <laughs> dissect that one i'm definitely no phd so anime logic let's just chalk it up to that and then we have Van Auger. He's actually one of my favorite on Blackbeard's crew. And he's got like a he's got a K Fed stash going, you know, like a Kevin Federline OG early two thousands just pencil stash going, you know. And he actually has the warp warp fruit. And from everything I've seen so far, that is the most terrifying. He literally can now teleport and snipe people at supersonic speeds. Van Auger is a friggin' threat and i would be a little scared for yasop or usop or even maybe even ben becky i know ben becky's vice captain but my goodness any gunslinger that needs to go against van auger now your observation hockey better be on point because this man is about to be a problem if usop ends up taking him out at the end like solo dolo no one can talk shit about usop anymore because that's going to be a absolutely bonkers fight so again we already touched on jesus you know uh, burgess he looks pretty BC. I like his new mask. He looks cool. It's like there's been like a mini time skip in the time everybody was in Wano. I guess that's fair considering how long that arc went on even in the real world. So he's got the buff buff fruit. Um, I'm sure that it's not going to be as simple as just gaining muscles because I think we've seen a few devil fruits like that already. Urux or uh, Mad Bunk, I should say, is kind of similar, but there's a little bit more of a twist to it. So maybe there's going to be a twist to, uh, to uh, Burgess as well. So this, this guy literally lifts a mountain. He lifts a mountain and just kind of chucks it, like, which might be one of the strongest feats of physical strength we've seen, other than um, it was Jozu when he grabbed the ice, because I think that's still one of the strongest physical uh, feats we've seen, like, that wasn't quite Devil Fruit related, so um, Burgess is definitely a problem. So, again, as Lost said, superhuman strength, bizarre, contagions, teleportation, like, they went ham hunting Devil Fruit users, let's just be honest. So, Law straight up uses room and he protects them from being crushed by the island. I see that... Uh, Jean Bart seemingly has lipstick on, so I guess that's like half female Jean Bart. So if we get a full panel of that, that'll be kind of funny. But beyond that, we find out that Stronger, which is the horse that Doc Q's on, actually has a Pegasus fruit, which makes me sad because that's another mythical devil fruit in such a short amount of time, and we don't know who the original user is, and it makes me feel sad. Like, that probably would have been like a really cool fruit to have, and then Blackbeard just comes and fucking snipes it, like the Akatsuki once again. So Blackbeard, Blackbeard is being super active in, in this arc in the past few chapters, and he's saying, you know, Big Mom and Kaido are gone. This sounds fun. I knew one of you squirts were going to show up to this island. Uh, that who he's referring to is obviously uh, Law, Kid, or Luffy. I think that I think that he could have been more unlucky, but he also could have got luckier. You know, if he was going up against Kid, honestly, I would say GG to Kid, but he's going up against Law, and Law is pretty busted. I mean, Law doesn't have confirmed Conqueror's Hockey, I don't think so, and I know Kid does, but I still think Law, especially with Kroom, his Awakening, him seemingly using hockey, we don't know what type of hockey he's able to use, but a lot of people are thinking Law's going to die here. I really hope Oda doesn't do this. It's been a theory for a long time that Law would die. Um, and I'm really, 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 really just begging that it doesn't happen here. And please, Oda, please, for the love of God, do not off-screen this fight. Please do not off-screen this fight. That would just be ridiculous if he did that. Two Ds are about to fight each other, and Law isn't backing down either. He's like, is that any way to, you know, speak to a fellow Worst Generation member? And they're talking about all the Poneglyph Robins that they have, and basically it's all for nothing. They're going to fight and see who takes it. Now, truthfully, I don't think Blackbeard's getting taken out by Law in the general story, but he could lose to Law here. You know what I mean? Law could also get injured i'm hoping not fatally but 
please do not off screen this and do not kill law because they're going to settle this as he said winner takes it all when titans clash so that's mostly been it i know that i've been away for a few weeks and honestly i still i'm going to be very active on this channel i'm going to go back to posting a lot of videos a lot's been happening with work life my apartment having stuff done with it which prevented me from posting videos but your boy the galaxy shogun is still here so if you have not subscribed already and you enjoyed this video and you want to hear more from me and more discussions that are coming out i got some great content planned for you we're going to be doing a lot uh, for the rest of the year and the coming year so please if you want to help me get to a thousand subscribers hit that subscribe button help your boy out hit the like button leave a comment anyways this has been your boy astro thank Thanks again for watching the video. Have a great day. And remember, always go towards your one. Peace.